I'm Tom Blanks with Red Belt Bushcraft, starting a new project. Going to make some oil cloth to go along with this shelter series that we've been doing. So I've got a few things I need to do around the house. One of them is starting to make the oil cloth itself and uh, some waterproofing treatment that we can use to treat not only our oil cloth if we decide to use this particular treatment, but also something that we can use to dress our haversack and our other backpacks. I'll bring you in here a little bit closer and show you exactly what I've got going on. To make a treatment that has a wax effect to it, one of the things we're going to need is one pound of beeswax. I bought this at Hobby Lobby and I've got a coffee can sitting inside of a pot of water and that's melting down nicely and as soon as we get that melted we'll add the rest of our ingredients. So the next thing we need to do once we have melted our one pound block of beeswax is we have added eight ounces of boiled linseed oil and eight ounces of mineral spirits and I have that mixed in this container right here. Now I'm going to turn you around And you can see that I have brought outside my boiled beeswax or my melted beeswax and I've got it set up over a little uh, a sterno stove. And just to let you know, yes, fire extinguishers are available. This stuff is extremely flammable and I use gloves as I was working with this. I recommend you do the same. And now what we're going to do is we're going to combine those ingredients and stir it a little bit. Let's see, hold on here for a minute while I get my stirring stick. Okay, I would like to add that this recipe come from Surge Racer 56, S-U-R-G-R-A-C-E-R 56. -E and his video on YouTube is called Homemade Waterproofing. I encourage you to watch that. That's where I got this idea from. Now I was hoping that this one pound coffee can would be big enough, but I don't believe it's going to be. So I'm simply going to replace that with a number 10 can. That way I can store this in there. And I'm going to add my two mixes here of the boiled linseed oil and the mineral spirits. And then I'm going to just start adding this wax and stir as I add. And it looks like that coffee can may have held this, but it definitely would have been filled to the brim and not give me a lot of room to work here. So, now that that's all mixed, I'm going to just take that off the heat and let it cool and uh, we'll come back later and see exactly what that looks like. And as you see on his video, what you can do is take this, it'll, I don't know, it kind of looked about like lard to me. When it dries up, there's what it looks like in the can. And we'll come back and see what it looks like, but you can take that lard type material, you can smear it all over your... Uh, your haversack or what have you and then heat it up with a heat gun and waterproof it. Okay, next thing I want to try is to actually make some oil cloth. And before I sacrifice an entire California, uh, I think it's called a California King, sheet of Egyptian cotton a little bit more there. I'm going to try to make up some oil cloth, cloth. Now these are the same two chemicals. This is that mineral spirit and this is the boiled linseed oil. And I'm going to just put in four ounces of each and mix those up just like I did before. And then I'm going to take this piece of cloth that I have here that is the same material. It was a pillowcase that I cut up. Oh, a little bit more. I'm a measuring cup out here. 
so I get these just right and I know exactly what I've mixed up so I can duplicate it on a larger scale. I have a sheet, I have the fitted sheet in the pillowcases that I'd like to make into oil cloth to use for different projects. I also have a large painter's tarp that I have washed and dried. I've got it folded up and I'm going to start cutting it up and making a nice tarp out of that. So, I need to see how this stuff's going to work. So now that that's mixed up, all I'm going to do is saturate this cotton, make sure I get it all completely saturated in this chemical, and then I'm going to take it out and I'm going to hang it over the chain link fence in the backyard for a couple of days and let it dry and see what happens. Now remember when you do this, I'm just shoving it in here, but you got to pull it out and turn it and all of that kind of stuff to make sure that you get it completely saturated. And then you can squeeze it out a little bit, from what I've been told anyway. And remember that this has been washed and dried to set the fabric. So anyway, let me get that done and get that out over the clothesline. And get me a rag here and wipe my hands off so that I don't get that on the camera. And in a couple of days I'll show you how that turns out. Multiple projects going on today. Next we're going to make a little bit of dye. Okay, the next thing we're going to start working on is we're going to make some dye. These are walnuts. I just picked them up yesterday. And the only thing I'm going to do is break them out of these holes. Now they call these green walnut holes and they're good for a lot of different things. I'm just going to hit it, break that thing open, and then tear it off in a nut. Now this nut is still green, even though the outside hole is starting to deteriorate. And you can take these nuts, set them out in the sun, or go ahead and bake them and they'll be good to eat. But I'm going to just take these holes and I'm going to break them up a little bit. And I've got some that are very green and I've got some that are turning brown. I'm not going to separate them. I'm just going to try to break them up a little bit. And I'm going to put them in this bucket here. And I'm going to let them set with a little bit of water for a few days. And then we'll go from there. I've got a video on making this dye before, so I'm not going to go into a lot of details. This is just something that I may use if I want to change the color of that painter's cloth a little bit and take it from a white to a little bit of an off brown or um, one other tip. This stuff will stain your hands, so if you're worried about that, I'd recommend you wear some rubber gloves. So let me set this off to the side, and we're going to get to the real crux of what I'm out here doing today, and that's we're going to take that water treatment. I'm going to take my hammer sack here, and we're going to treat that up and waterproof it. Now I don't know what kind of hammer sack this is. It's just a small backpack style or knapsack. Has a divider on the inside. Has a zipper pocket in the lid, and it's called Element. And I have not been able to find it anywhere except for this one. And I can't tell you where it came from because I bought it from a Goodwill. It was just a couple of bucks one day. It comes with a nice shoulder strap with a pad. And uh, for me, most of the time I carry a backpack, but if I want a small haversack, this bag seems to work out real nice for me. It's got tons of straps and attachment points, but it's not waterproof. But it is canvas. It says it's 100% cotton on a uh, label on the inside. So instead of trying to oil cloth it, since there's multiple layers, I'm going to try to just take some of this uh, waterproofer that we just made, and I'll show you what that looks like now. It came out the consistency just like I was talking about. It's kind of like a lard. It's still a little bit soft. You can reach down in it and you can pull it out. But it has the texture of soft butter. And all I'm going to do is reach in and get a big finger full of this stuff. And I'm going to just take my hands and start smearing it on this thing. And rubbing it all around and try to really concentrate on the edges. Now, that's not going to do the trick by itself. It's not going to cause it to penetrate this heavy canvas. What I'll have to do is come back with either a hair dryer 
or a uh, heat gun set on low and actually melt this in. So let me get this rubbed down. I won't bore you with me sitting here rubbing this in. Now this isn't all it made, of course. This is just a little bit left in that large can. I went ahead and poured the rust of it back into that coffee can that I had to uh, boil linseed oil. That Anyway, I had that mixture in uh, just for ease of storage so it wouldn't take up so much room. So if we run out, I've got plenty of it sitting over there. But let me get this rubbed in and then I'll bring you back when we do the heat treatment and we'll see how it turns out. Okay, I'm not going to show you all of this because it's kind of like watching paint dry. But when I put this stuff on here, I started putting it on by hand and I could tell that process was going to take forever. So I took the can that was not solidified yet, was still liquid, and took an old throwaway paintbrush and just hit this thing really quick and fast and got underneath all these loops and everything really quick before that stuff started to set up. Now when I did that, it came out, it is white. You took Vaseline and rubbed all over my haversack and I was concerned to say the least. But then I hit it with uh, uh, the heat gun the way they say to and sure enough it has melted in and it just feels like it's waterproof. There's no more sliminess to it, there's no more oiliness to it. It really looks nice and I'll give you just a quick showing of how it melts in. Put your gun on it, start wiggling it around a little bit, start melting it. See, I'm working here on this corner. I'm really trying to pay attention to the corners and to every place that it is sewn, especially on the edges, around the buckles, and all the ties and all of that. But it melts, absorbs into the fabric, and goes away. I don't really see a whole lot of color variation. It may be a little bit darker than it was, but uh, there's definitely not much of a pigment change to it at all. So if you're looking to dye your material, I think you're gonna have to do that first. I was very tempted to do that to this bag, but for whatever reason, I decided not to do it. If I was going to do it, I wanted to do it in the walnut dye, and it's just too early in the year. Uh, the big heavies are getting ready to fly over, so we're going to get a lot of noise. But like I said, this is kind of like letting paint dry anyway, but it's turning out really nice. I'll show you the end project. Sound the freedom, boys. Sound the freedom. No problem. All right, all done, moment of truth time. Let's see how waterproof it looks. All right, bone dry on the inside. Awesome. All right, guys, thanks for joining me as we got a little bit of work done here around the house. We've got a couple of projects started. We'll make a little bit of dye. Got that waterproofing sitting over there. See how that oil cloth turns out? The waterproofing on the haversack seems to be doing great. And there was a side note. The zipper on the inside was getting a little rough to operate, and after giving it a good coat and melting that wax in it, it operates just like brand spanking new. The buckles also and the snaps are connecting together a lot better, so not only was it good for waterproofing our, our canvas here, but it's making all of our snaps, our swivels, our buttons, and our zippers work a lot better also. Well, thanks for joining me as we got a few of these projects done. I hope you enjoyed it. Tried to keep it short and sweet today. Until next time, I'm Tim Langston with Red Dog Bushcraft, home of global safety and survival. God bless.